Hey GED students, let's take a look at this simpler example that's going to build up to some skill we need. So I don't know why I wrote advanced here. This is when I try to do too many things at once. We're looking at a beginner application of this concept. So we're kind of building up to a GED level. But it says order each list of numbers from least to greatest. Now, um, there are Definitely, you might see a problem on the non-calculator section that asks you to order each a list of numbers. Now, the likelihood is when you order a list of numbers, you're going to see a mix of decimals and fractions. And there could even be some negatives in there. I don't expect you to necessarily see absolute value bars in those problems, but we're just going to kind of flex two muscles at once. We're going to prep for this ordering list of numbers concept while also practicing what we learned about opposites and absolute values. Okay, so let's take a look. So order each list of numbers from least to greatest. We want to go from the smallest to the largest. So let's just take a look at A, which is going to happen, help, help us practice what we learned about positive and negative numbers. A lot of students just want to you know, put them in the order like they would usually think of when they look at negative numbers. Like they're like, okay, well, least has got to be negative four. And then greater than that's got to be a negative 11. But be careful. Remember what you learned about negatives. You know, when I look at a number line and I have zero in the middle, as I go off and get bigger, one, two, three, as I go in that direction, my numbers are getting greater. But as I go off in the negative direction, negative one, negative two, negative three, my numbers are actually getting smaller. And that seems counterintuitive to a lot of students. But think of it this way. It's like who's richer and who's poorer. Okay, greater is like richer. If you have three bucks, you're way richer than the dude who's in debt, three dollars. Okay, and then the dude who's in debt, a thousand dollars is really much poorer than the dude who has a thousand dollars. Okay. And so the more positive I have, the greater I get, but the more negative I go, that's actually poorer. That's actually less. Okay. So as we go to order this, my, what students think of as the biggest negative number, but the further negative I am, the least I have. So we get negative 11, then negative four, then zero, then three, and then seven. And so these number lines, if you can draw them out or envision them, will really help you in situations like this because the same order that they ap would appear on the number line is the least to greatest order, okay? Um, so nice, not too bad for A. But now looking at B, there's actually some work we should do to simplify these examples before we try to order them. So that's my good advice for you. If you can simplify. If there's any math you can do to make these guys simpler, do it before you order them, okay? And that will avoid um, silly errors like this one. Remember, a lot of students think absolute value means opposite. So they say, oh, the absolute value of seven must be negative seven, but that's not what absolute value means, right? If I just wanted to say that opposite, change the sign, I would just pop a negative in front of a number. There's the opposite of seven. That's how I'd write it. So if it doesn't mean opposite, what does absolute value mean? Huh? Absolute value means a number's distance from zero on the number line. And it seems like a silly thing because if I ask you, you know, how far away from zero is seven? You're like, duck eight, it's seven away. So nothing really happened to seven when I simplified this, but look at the next number, the absolute value of negative four. I'm asking you how far away is negative four from zero? And some students would tell me, oh, it's negative four too. Nothing happened again, like what a boring operation. But I would say, I disagree with you. You can't be less than zero away. You can't be less than right there, okay? So having a negative number when I talk about how far doesn't make sense. And so what ends up happening if I take the absolute value of a negative number is it becomes positive. So is the absolute value of negative four? It's positive four. What's the absolute value of a positive? It's still a positive. So practically, all that absolute value does is really just make the number that's inside it, inside it, okay, guys? It won't affect anything outside of it, but inside of it, it'll become positive. So what's the absolute value of negative six? Positive six. What's the absolute value of three? It's just three. 
right? We're three away from zero. And what's the absolute value of five? It's just five. And now that I can see what the simplified answer is, it's a lot easier to order it. So three is the smallest number in the simplified, so this is the smallest expression. So the absolute value of three comes first. Uh, next smallest number would be four, and so I'll write this one next, the absolute value of negative four, and then five, absolute value of five, so you can kind of see like taking absolute value is like canceling out negative signs here. And then we have the absolute value of negative six. And finally, the absolute value of seven. Gorgeous. So if you consider the absolute value of a number, you're just looking at its weight, like how far away it is from zero without caring which direction it went in. Hmm, interesting. Okay, next example does get a little trickier. Let's give ourselves some room here. Uh, because now I'm kind of comboing a couple of things we learned, the opposites and the absolute values. Okay, so once again, if I can simplify anything, let me do it. So this is just negative four. There's not really anything to simplify. But starting here, I sure can take the absolute value of negative four, right? So absolute values are gonna turn its insides positive. So the absolute value of negative four is positive four. Now this one does say opposite. This is just the opposite of six. You say, does parentheses make it the opposite? No, parentheses just set something apart so I can read it. So that's the opposite of six or the negative of positive six. And of course, so that's just negative six. That one's easy to think about. Okay, zero, there's nothing to simplify. But the absolute value of three, there is something to simplify. So once again, be careful. That's not the opposite of three. That's the absolute value of three. So how far is three from zero? Um, it's just three. Just is positive. It stays positive. Wonderful. And now I can order it. And whew, now there's negative numbers in my ordering too. So I have to remember what I learned in A. The more negative you are, the smaller you are. So the least number here was the opposite of six. Again, even though I simplified it to find my answer, I will write this in my in my answer, but you won't have to remember that for the GED because these will be multiple choice. Okay, what's next smallest? Well, the only other negative number, huh? So negative four. And then of course, zeros between positives and negatives. And now my positives <laughs> go the way I would behave, expect them to. So three would come next. So I'll write that original absolute value of three. And then finally, whatever simplified to four. And that was the absolute value of negative four. Whew. All righty, you guys. Ooh, I combined things. Um, and maybe, you, again, you won't see it in just this combination on the GED. But we did just flex our muscles with a few different GED skills. So congratulations.